I just found out that Subaru still includes SI drive on their new models. I thought it went away. This 2008 is equipped with SI drive. Let's test it. For those that don't know, Subaru SI drive is their Subaru Intelligent drive. It's kind of like a sport mode that you can change through. There's on this model, there's three settings. There's sport, which is standard. There's sport sharp, which is a more aggressive throttle fill and shift pattern. And there's intelligent. Now, Subaru says that sport sharp is supposed to help performance and that intelligence is supposed to have to help miles per gallon or fuel economy. We're gonna test that. So I'm going to do a zero to 60 test and go on the same stretch of road, do a zero to 60 test in sport sharp. And then I'm gonna do another zero to 60 test in intelligent or I mode and see if there's a difference. All right, YouTube, hopefully you can see I am in I. Sport is standard and Sport Sharp is supposed to be performance. I'm going to leave it and drive for this test and we're gonna do a zero to 60. I'm gonna time it on both the scan gauge there and then I'm going to time it on the GoPro. I believe you can see all this on the GoPro, but I'm not sure. If not, I'll take another video with my phone. But let's do test number one. Let's do test number one in I. And I'm gonna leave it just in regular drive, not in manual mode there. Arm, gunning it. Well, I don't believe this to be accurate. <laughs> but, as long as it's accurate the wrong way, and it's equally inaccurate, we'll compare it to the time, and I'll put the time up on the screen here. <coughs> but, I don't think a uh, Subaru Outback can do five seconds flat, zero to 60. That's some crazy times. <laughs> all right so let's just say that's an accurate all right we're now putting it into sport sharp you can actually see the throttle there let me show you versus well apparently it doesn't do it in neutral so never mind anyways we're gonna do the same test that and I'm gonna put it in drive and we're gonna punch it arm Something I don't like about the SI drive on this 2008 Outback model is the placement of the knob actually replaces where the heated seat controls normally would go and the heated seat controls are therefore moved in a really awkward position uh, where you have to use the back of your fingers to operate them which is a really awkward task to do and it's especially weird because Subaru actually includes the sport sharp button on the steering wheel so the knob is completely redundant beyond the 0 to 60 test I'm going to go ahead and do a miles per gallon test to see if it does actually help fuel economy I'm going to standardize the test as much as possible go down the same stretch of road log the miles with cruise control set then I'm gonna go down the same stretch of road the other way log the miles with cruise control set and then I'm gonna change from sport sharp to sport intelligent or just intelligent actually and we're going to compare the data and see if there's any change
All right, YouTube, this is going to be the start of the miles per gallon test. I have it in Sport Sharp. When I pass a point up ahead, I'm going to mark that point and I'm going to reset the trip computer here. And then we're going to see, as I bump the, uh, as I bump the wipers, uh, then we're going to see how it does. We're going to go the loop, reset it, do the loop again, except in I drive. And then we'll come back and do one more loop to see how much that variable changed. Because um, we want to do an ABA to kind of remove those variables. I have set cruise control at 65 miles an hour approximately. I have chosen that speed because that is the speed limit. When I hit the expansion gap on this bridge, I'm going to hit the reset button. to drive and I'm going to do this loop now. Alright, I'm sure you've noticed this is not a perfectly flat road, but I am in West Virginia and they, the flat roads do not exist. But I'm coming up on my marker here. When I go underneath this sign, I'll say it's 22.4. Alright. We are going to now turn around and do the same loop in the other direction. I'm doing both directions to try to even out the uneven, unevenness of the road. So if they're coming at the same point, they should not, they should average out to roughly what it would be if it was a flat road. But let's see how it works. All right the other direction on my A test, still in Sport Sharp, hitting the reset now. I have kept the cruise on and I have only canceled it with either my brake, with either my foot by hitting the brake button, or I have canceled it by hitting the actual cancel button. So when I hit resume, the cruise control should be at the same speed. expansion joint and 29.8 is we'll average those two numbers together and put them on the screen that's our a test for sport sharp I have now put it in I we're going to do that same loop again under the same procedures at the same distance and we're going to go both directions The expansion joint is coming up. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. Again, I'm in drive and in I. And when I hit the expansion joint, I'll reset it and we'll do the loop. Alright, we are coming up on the marker and it is going <coughs> at now 21.9. So that is part one of our B run. And after that, we will go back to our A and we'll see how much variance we're getting. And if there's a pretty clear trend that's outside of the variance, I'd say there's a difference. All right, I am coming up on the expansion gap. I'll make a note of the bump and we'll write down the data. 29.3 Alright, I have put it back. I've resumed the cruise. I'm back into Sport Sharp. When we cross the expansion bridge or expansion gap on the bridge, I'll hit the reset button. up on the expansion gap. I'll go ahead and get ready to hit reset. When I hit the bump, I'll reset it. All right, coming up on the marker and we've got 21.1, 21.2. So the marker
marker is right at the top of a hill, if you're wondering, and that's why it, the current fuel economy goes up as soon as I get to that marker. We'll do the A run one more time. I'll leave it in Sports Sharp, and then we'll go home and write down the data and make this video all pretty. All right, YouTube, this is our final A run. We're coming up on that expansion joint, and I'll call it when we do. 30.5. All right, let's gather our data and see what it looks like. So in the miles per gallon test, it made no change. I actually saw a very slight decrease in miles per gallons in intelligent mode, which is kind of a bummer because that was supposed to be the whole point. Uh, I was talking to my friend Jason over at Power of Your Brains. I'll say hi to him here. And he suggested it might be helpful for someone that had a very heavy lead foot while driving. But for a standardized test with cruise control set, driving down a straight stretch of road at a constant speed, it showed no difference. It actually showed a slight decrease in miles per gallon. What else do I want to say? Thanks for watching. Hope this helps somebody. Hope this video helps somebody. Thanks for watching.